Welcome to the Mining Store Podcast, Australia's number one crypto mining rig solution provider, covering the latest news and insights into macroeconomics, cryptocurrency markets, altcoin news, and technical analysis. And now, without further ado, let's hand it over to the miningstore.com.au team. Hi everyone and welcome to today's podcast with Mining Store. Um, we are missing the big boss Will today, um, so hopefully we'll fill his boots and, uh, and get everyone up to speed on, on what's happening in the market. Um, firstly, we'll probably just hand over to Taylor and Theo just to go through the convention that the team were at over the weekend. Um, they've had a really good response up there, so um, yeah, it'd be good to hear some stories about how it all went. Yeah, do you want me to go? Oh, um... So obviously, clearly, I got a little bit of a tan there, so it was warm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it was really good. It was really good. I, I think the first day was super busy for us. Like, obviously, we didn't expect like the um, response to be um, that good. But literally, from the word go at 9 a.m., we had like literally four people at our stand talking to us. Um, and I think the the major thing that I gathered was um, a lot of people were coming across and saying, "Oh, it's good to see." like you guys actually exist um, <laughs> in the flesh. So uh, it sort of built credibility and a lot of our clients came through. I know Trent came through, Nathan um, and, and a few others. And uh, I guess it it was cool to hang out with them. And, and um, you know, I even, as far as with Nathan, I actually went and did one of the Binance competitions with him and um, tried to jump over this thing. And, and unfortunately I was trying to get a t-shirt, but I, they got this doormat anyway, but <laughs> there, <laughs> yeah, convention. yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, with, overall it was a really good experience. We had a massive response. Um, a lot of people had a ton of questions about everything and we had some of our competitors there. Um, but I felt as though, um, having a long standing, um, um, you know, time in the space gave us a definite edge um i guess with our facilities and our branding and people knowing who we are um and just yeah like uh, i think by the end of it me and taylor i can sort of say this that we're, we're a bit over talking about crypto they can tell you that <laughs> um but yes sort of the key takeaways for me was um yeah definitely just seeing how well established the brand is um and and really just building that credibility for the future and and had some really detailed chats with um some really big in, uh, investors. I know Will did like some few big deals there, like there and then on the spot. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really great experience and and looking forward to next year's one. You kind of forget, you know, Mining Store has been around for what, five years now, and we've kind of flown under the radar, so to mm. speak, because we haven't gone out and done a lot of these um, conventions yeah. just yet, but we're obviously now a global brand, um, but we've kind of flown on the radar. So it's good to kind of get out there for you guys and, and meet some clients and, and see what the response has been. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, we all sort of, I guess, had a chat on probably Sunday afternoon and said, you know, as much as, as Theo was saying before, as much as, you know, we were very much done and dusted when it came to talking about, about mining or, or anything crypto for a few days, it was, it was really enjoyable because, you know, we also got to see what, other people in the space, you know, not necessarily mining, but just in the crypto space, we're doing and hearing, you know, new ideas, different projects. That's that's a huge thing for us, and you don't know what that'll spark. Um, you know, people whether it came to you know finding alternative energy sources or you know different trading bots or, or all that sort of stuff. So it, it was pretty cool to sort of hear what other people in the industry are doing, um, as well as sort of look to the future. You know, next year that's in Melbourne. Um, you know, I think we're we're definitely keen to to do another stand there and try and, I guess, build a bit more of a presence um, with with the community and try and obviously make it so that you know we're impossible to miss. Um, so yeah, no, it was a, it was a pretty cool thing to see, particularly from my point of view. You know, never being to anything of that size in this industry before, uh, we sort of seen you know overseas. So it was pretty cool. And they had um they also had a, a lot of. Uh... Uh, so part of the event you had an application where people were arranging meetups and we went to a few different ones and and met some other people and shout out to the k-safe boys um blake and that uh, that we spent a lot of time um with them as well um and yeah it was just cool to, to sort of break bread with people at those events as well uh, there was an after party and 
a lot of free drinking and stuff going on there. So <laughs> crypto and alcohol um, definitely mix well. <laughs> yeah, no, we had we had salt. We've got still <laughs> sore feet purely because literally standing talking for ten hours back then to go have drinks and dance. It was it was it was a pretty pretty tough two days, you know. <laughs> Mm. no awesome well it, uh, yeah it sounds like it went down went down a treat so uh, yeah thanks again to everyone that came down to meet the boys um at the convention as well um i guess we probably want to start the podcast off um in the usual format taylor go mm -hmm. through any kind of questions that you've had or anthea as well from mm -hmm. clients that are coming in asking about the market conditions so if you want to kind of um you know have you got any questions yeah. to hand, um, that we can kind of go through I think I sort of like, I guess, over the past sort of week, it's been, you know, obviously a whirlwind with going into state and whatnot, but I sort of come, came together with a few questions that I guess were the most common from the convention that I thought might be interesting to sort of, you know, share not only to our listeners, but those that are out there. But, you know, if, 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 you, if you don't know what the answer is, ask someone, obviously. Um, but I guess sort of the best one that I sort of got was, you know, in relation to what happened last week with GPU mining switching and people mining in Australia, you know, where and how can they pivot? Not necessarily, you know, what token and whatnot, but in the sense of machinery. Like, obviously, we've all seen what's happened on, you know, every other coin that's, that could, that's mineable with GPU. You know, it's all quadrupled plus in the sense of its difficulty rate. You know, people are struggling to even make a dollar a day at the moment. Um, you know, how can they pivot towards an ASIC or, or something else? Um, and I guess the most common thing was people, you know, I've got a small solar setup. Can I can I mine, you know, Bitcoin, you know, with a miner with that? Which on that Taylor, what what I would say is generally in a bull and bear market, the hash rate tends to follow the price of a coin. So generally if, if the hash rate goes up, the price of the coin tends to go up as well. So this, this bear market has been slightly different. It's the first bear market where the hash rate has remained elevated, but the price of the coins have come down. And it's just due to economic factors that are outside of mining and outside of cryptocurrency per se. So although it may not be as profitable right now to switch different coins and the hash rate may go up because everyone from the Ethereum network is now mining other altcoins, when you go into a bull market, it should start to pay off. Yeah, exactly right. It's just a bit of short-term pain that isn't necessarily related to the cryptocurrency market. It's, you know, there's there's wider things happening in the market at the moment. Yeah, yeah thanks. There, there was a few people that came through. There were definitely quite large-scale um, GPU miners, a eh, eh, Taylor? Yeah, for sure. Um, looking for alternatives. And, and they really, it was quite fascinating because they didn't actually know, um, even considering they've been in ETH for so long, they didn't actually know about the um, just the inner workings of even Bitcoin mining. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was good to have a chat with them, and I guess we'll probably see some of them start coming through. Um, but yeah, that was interesting to see some of those ETH maxis. Yeah, for sure, particularly when it came to mining. You know, like I guess um, the the look on someone's face when you were saying, you know, an S19 Pro is like 3.25 kilowatts per hour, and they were like, "Whoa!" Like they there. It was kind of that moment where they were like, "Okay, this is a very different story to to what you know mining ETH was." So it was it was quite cool to sort of see you know what how their perspective of going forward was, um, and sort of you know not necessarily enlightening them, but just sort of you know having that conversation about you know what what avenues forward there was, particularly with like obviously our hosting arrangements as well. Um, and then just yeah, I guess now would probably be good to speak about uh, some of the things that impacted uh, the mining industry, and I think the. Mm -hmm. We were at the airport, I think, Taylor, when the merge was happening. So it was a bit of a non-event. Pretty much. Um, I don't and, think it's much, to be honest. Yeah. And yeah. then I, I guess what sort of I saw a lot of online was more or less um, the things that you don't want to hear about, which was obviously the biggest headline thing is now ETH is like 95% non-use you know, non of power. So, um, but I think... The, the hard thing is, is now like most of the governments and stuff are starting to use that. And uh, it's, it's, it's the same sort of FUD that we've been seeing throughout the entire time about power consumption and not really looking at the positives. I think even with ETH um, moving to proof of stake, there's going to be a number of other things that come through with regards to even staking itself. Um, and all the, the other things that are positive about Bitcoin mining with the renewable side of things and the innovation coming from that space. And we've spoken about it before, but I guess being that was the main headline coming through. So even that said, you can see there is like even the network hash rate right now, I think it's currently still sitting around that 230 mark right now. And the expectation is about 250 by the end of the year. 
and that's a like a couple of things that have made that happen is obviously the XPs, the hydros, and all those sorts of things coming online. Um, but the way that I look at it is it's it's a positive because it's just more people getting involved and adding to, to security, secure and the security of the entire network. So I'd rather be a part of something that is building security and, and has that sort of innovation moving forward, even irrespective of the, the fact that the price is low. But and then again, it's obviously super important. And the main thing we were saying to a lot of people um, when they're looking at our facilities and the reason why I was telling them that we don't have our Oz facilities basically up and running is because we are in a bear market and the average cost of uh, you know energy in most facilities, you're looking at about 16, 17 cents in Australia, which if you were being charged at that cost, you, you're basically not in profit at the moment. It's not profitable to be at that price. So hence the reason why we have other options like we've spoken about before. Um, but yeah, I, I guess, again, um, depending on how you look at it with all the, the negative response about energy and stuff like that, um, it's it's going to be, you know, going to be good moving into the future, irrespective of whoever bans it, there's going to be someone else that's going to take up that, that network hash rate anyway. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, so what we probably want to do is, is Mitch, you, did you want to share your screen to go through some of the fundamentals and, and technical stuff that we can touch on? Uh, this week's obviously the the Fed interest rate meeting. Uh, we could touch on some data that happened last week and why the market's moving as well. Yeah, one second. There we go. Set up there. That's yep. there. Yeah, cool. awesome. awesome. Um, I guess we'll just touch on what's kind of happened since our last podcast. So everything, whether it's crypto, uh, stocks, equities, have turned sharply lower uh, for another leg to the downside coming off the back of the inflation data last week. So inflation inflation or CPI came in slightly higher than expected. The main driving force behind the higher inflation was the increase in shelter, which increased from 6.2% to 6.2% from 5.7%. So shelter is the largest component of CPI. It makes up 33% of the CPI basket. And because of rapid increases in the housing prices of the last two years, they're expecting shelter to remain elevated over the next couple of months. So inflation may actually be hanging around this kind of level now going forward for a couple of months. So coming out of that CPI release, um, expectations that the Fed were going to hike to 1%, you know, the, the bets are kind of growing. So it's either going to be a 0.75% or a 1% increase this week. If we get a 1% increase, obviously there could be another negative reaction in the market. So the market's been pricing that in over the past couple of days. There's a couple of different scenarios. Um, one scenario is that we get a 1% increase in interest rates. And then the Fed says we're now data dependent. We may now back off. You know, it's, it's a large rate hike, uh, which may actually be a bullish scenario short term for the markets. So we may get a large rate hike. And then in the conference afterwards, they say, listen, we're going to start backing off now going forward. Or they could say 1% and we're going to keep raising aggressively, which would be <laughs> extremely detrimental to the market. We'd probably see another meltdown across financial markets. Um, or they do a 0.75% and continue um, as they have been doing. So, What's your gut feeling over all options considered? Um, I th yeah, I personally think it'll be 0.75, but you know, as Tony said, the bets are growing for for 100 basis points. So, what's the odds sitting at now? Usually, like uh, last time I saw it, it was like 70 something percent, 0 0.75, and now mm. it's changed 50 50. Or what you, we also want to kind of consider is they've seen the reaction in the market. The Fed has seen the reaction in the market now based mm. on everyone thinking there's going to be a 1% increase. So if they do come out with a 1% increase, it could dump the markets even further. So they may not want to do that because they know what the risks are um, mm. in, the, in the market. So I'm, yeah. I'm leaning towards a 0.75%. Um, but, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, Anyone's it's, game, eh? Anyone's so game. Basically what you're saying is make sure you've got, you know, some really low, nice um, entries sitting there ready to go. I mean, I, I just don't see, I don't think we're coming out of a bear market anytime soon in the next couple of weeks. You know, yeah. There's still some more pain to be had. Uh, billionaire hedge fund manager Ray Dalio sees another 20% to the downside, uh, which would take the S&P down to that kind of 3,000 area. If the indices and equities are moving lower, then the likelihood is that crypto is going to move lower with it as well. So, um, yeah, maybe a bit too. I was like, everything's just going to go back to pre-bull run. 
levels. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, could. Yeah, yeah, highly likely. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's Thursday morning. Uh, we'll know more next week. And we can kind of jump into the technicals then. But, um, yeah, if you yeah. want to kind of add to that, Mitch, or, or jump into any more technicals as well. No, no, I think you covered off mostly. I think, yeah, I think the biggest thing um, is what you just said then. It's actually the S&P and those stock market reactions probably over the next two weeks will give us a better idea of where the crypto bottom will look like. Um, obviously, risk assets respond uh, a lot stronger to these type of movements. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, things have become a lot more bleak now that, you know, that CPI data, because I think all of us expected it, that it would come in a bit lower yeah. and, you know, I think that's what people need to understand is <laughs> this landscape changes week by week. So what we're saying now could be a lot different to what we're saying in the next podcast. But I definitely agree with your sentiment. Um, off the back of that 886 we swing failed, I was a bit confident that we could maybe see a midterm rally. But off, obviously that CPI data came out after we we spoke about that and a few other things. So I think lower for now is probably the general consensus. But once again, I do want to reiterate that you know, in times like these, you know, everyone on the sidelines now that they have this information is going, well, I'm going to be waiting for 14K, 16K. And, you know, these are the type of people that miss out altogether. So it's just something to keep in mind. But I, I definitely think the general consensus should be probably lower in the next two weeks, uh, at least. And then maybe October, November is where we start to see a bit of relief. And then who knows? I, I know last week we were discussing December as a time for... A potential bottom but I, I yeah i think that's where the easing and the kind of relief will come towards the end of this year as predicted really but um yeah i'll just move on so just off the back of kind of what's happened last week uh we've seen the dxy kind of shoot back up to that level of resistance here that infamous level from 2002 and it's kind of been back testing it but not breaking through it um which is a good sign uh, but obviously you guys and everyone's well aware that we kind of need this to reverse for, for any form of rally or any form of push towards any area for, for cryptocurrency to kind of blossom. So uh, until this kind of happens, um, yeah, we're looking unlikely to really move from these levels. But there is a couple of things. We've got kind of a somewhat descending triangle uh, uh, at the top, at the topping of the DXY. So hopefully we can kind of visit these levels of support if so. Um, is there anything you wanted to add there, Tony, as to what you're seeing on the DXY? Yeah, on the DXY. So I think we highlighted um, the RSI. There's a big pennant structure on the yeah. RSI on the weekly time frame, and that actually hasn't been broken just yet. So we're still trading inside um, the RSI on the weekly charts. So I'm just going to bring my uh, chart across so we can kind of see that. So yeah, the RSI is still kind of trading inside this pennant structure. And there's not been actually a, a breakout yet. So there is a possibility of a top in play here. Um, but we need to see the RSI break down from this kind of level. So until it does that, you know, we're, we're kind of sitting on the sidelines and waiting. Once the yeah. DXY either breaks out above or below, we can then understand whether there's going to be a continuation to the upside or a reversal and a rally across risk assets. So um, yeah. just uh, patience on this one. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that if this is truly topping out and we have a topping structure, as some people do believe is occurring, it's probably the most important chart in all of cryptocurrency, pretty much um, across all, all assets. Yeah, all assets really, um, but particularly cryptocurrency, I should have said. So, yeah, for all those listeners, kind of keep an eye on or try to learn how to chart the DXY and whatnot because it's crucial to the movements of, of the market we study and the market we want to go positive. So, um, yep, yeah, uh, we'll just move on to Bitcoin quickly. I don't have a heap of Bitcoin stuff to show today. A lot of um, the new charting is to do with harmonics and an Elliott Wave count and stuff that I think I might have briefly showed, but all of our members get those in our, our subscription updates. But I'll quickly just touch on kind of what happened. Um, we've clearly got the strong area of support that we've looked down to three times. That kind of comes from late 2020. But essentially, we swing failed that 886 I mentioned a few times. We came back down. We retested it and have since started trading up. Uh, just at this level, I'll show, I'll show you on a kind of uh, zoomed in chart what happened. So we came up, tested 382, came back down and swing failed the 886 again. And we kind of met this resistance. You can see how it acted as a support in earlier September, late August. And we find kind of for most of this morning traded sideways at it and since have rejected. Um, we came back down. I think we retested the 786 and now have kind of bounced and 
we're trading at about nineteen thousand four hundred dollars now. So um, it's a bit of a weight on Bitcoin. I think um, you don't want to make any too irrational decisions. I think at this area, you know, a lot of alts are at great prices if you want to decide to begin your DCA strategy or to scoop some of these. Um, as long as you have that long term outlook, you know, I'm, I'm looking at things like Dot, for instance. At six dollars, you know, if you've got the outlook that you think it'll reach its AF of fifty-five in the next run, or beyond, which dot should, then you know you're looking at a ten x, uh, you know, return here. So um, something to keep in mind that you can begin to slowly DCA. But in terms of Bitcoin, um, yeah, it, it is a bit of a watch at the moment. As we said, lower is likely; it's not guaranteed. If we do see lower, I still think these bear flag, uh, this bear flag that we had play out still has some playing out to do. Uh, it's kind of been forgotten because we bounced and then we've come back down again. But um, I think this was an, an important fake out if it, it was still playing out because we retested, uh, we hit that key level of resistance that you see comes from this week in uh, late July, early June, and have since come back down. So you know, usually these big bear flags, you can see how this one played out. There's a lot more room to the downside. Um, and that was ultimately targeting, you know, targeting a move like that from, you know, here to 16K, 14K. So, you know, technically speaking, that is still a pattern that's still playing out and can still play out. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, Ethereum, I will just quickly touch on Ethereum. The main pattern we've been showing you guys on the podcast is this head and shoulders. Um, I think we probably sent it out when it was kind of around this area forming this right shoulder. Uh, yeah, since I think we recorded last week, that neckline did break. Uh, we retested the neckline. We failed that retest and broke down. And um, pretty much landed, you can see this area of support coming that once acted as heavy resistance right here. And we kind of touched that for the uh, another uh, couple of other confluence points but that our members know about. But uh, yeah, and it's since retraced. And now we're trading at 1360 odd. So... Um, it showed pretty good support um, and strength, I'd say, Ethereum. But we did have, obviously, we've had the merge since last week when we spoke to you guys, and we kind of warned of the buy the rumor, sell the news type of deal. Um, that definitely occurred with Ethereum. It was a bit of a non-event. Tony and I were in my office piling on our shorts before <laughs> and crossing our fingers. But... Um, yeah, it was it was an interesting week and it's been interesting price action from here. But to those members listening, I'll definitely get a video out tomorrow kind of explain the confluence around here, um, a harmonic idea and kind of why we strive for what we sent out yesterday. But um, yeah, that's kind of it. I guess to kind of wrap up the technical side of things and fundamental side of things, you've got the interest rate hike coming. Um, expect a lot of volatility around that event as usual. If we see lower, do not be surprised. We still have a very bleak macroeconomic outlook with those interest rates, hikes and inflation. And I also want to say, do not be surprised if we just trade sideways for a long time because I think what a lot of traders do is they're always thinking about up or down. But in reality, for we know 17 to 22K, let's call it that area, is just the biggest accumulation zone ever. And, you know, they trade within this range for six months and you just know traders have known they've been waiting. Well, when are we going to 14 or when are we going to 50 and could have just been accumulating in this range? So um, I think that's it for today. Uh, does that oh, right? I just say, yeah, one last thing. Um, we still have some stock for uh, S19 Pros to go online on the first. Yep. So if anyone's out there interested in being part of that online date of the first of October, uh we still have some left for that stock that's it for me yeah nice i'll just yeah i'll just quickly add um we got some dcas out yesterday on some of our major alts we also had those gaming and metaverse buys that we did just before last week's podcast i believe and yeah so if anyone's interested in you know learning fundamental or technical analysis for those mem non-members that are listening you can always get in touch with taylor or i um to discuss that side of things so yeah Easy. Thanks for, for listening, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Oh, Tony, you've gone on mute. I think your mic might have died. <laughs> we'll end the podcast there. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Yeah.